Hello, and welcome Got to it. Toronto Bible Study. This is the podcast with our guest for today, Paul Valley of the Ryerson University. Is it still called Ryerson? Well, uh, uh, they keep calling it X X University, like the letter X, in <laughs> in, uh, in X. internal emails. Yeah, wow. X. I mean, yeah, I think it makes it sound kind of cool. Maybe they'll do, they just keep it as X. You know, makes yeah, it sound yeah. uh, sound uh, like Mar- Malcolm uh, X, like Malcolm X, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like communist. It sound... It's like communist uh, newspeak. You know, it's like you, you know what I mean, like where they have to literally change words, change the words. I mean, yeah. that's what, that's what they had, literally had in 1984, right? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, I don't know quite what to think about it. I, I sympathize with uh, some, of, some of that effort to re- rethink who we honor in our culture. Yeah. But at the same time, yeah, um, you, you scratch... Sorry, go ahead. Oh, oh, was it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you would agree with, you know, that a lot of our, our, our supposed heroes that get buildings named after them and, you know, that they have yeah. pretty it's spotty uh, yeah, history. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 I get that. Um, I mean, I don't, I, I didn't like, really. But what, what, I, what, I, what, I, what I, my problem with it is they miss the whole, they miss the real, it's like, it's a true band aid. It's the truest form of the Band-Aid solution, of the surface level, superficial solution to the problem. Do you know what I mean? And it's no effort to try to come to any kind of greater understanding. It's just, oh, racist. They're racist. So, you know, they put a, you know just get rid of them. Get, just erase them from history or whatever. I don't know. It's just bizarre. But maybe they don't want to erase yeah. them from history, but... Yeah, I mean, as much as uh, sorry, go ahead. What were we gonna say? What were we gonna say? Right? Oh no, I I I think um, uh, you know, when you're powerless, sometimes one of the few things you have control over is language. So I mean, I think a lot of us would like to really radically remake this world, um, but um, um. When that becomes impossible, then your political action can start to focus in a slightly insane way. You know, it just becomes very constrained to doing things like changing language, changing names of things. And that can feel very satisfying once you've so limited your ambitions. Um, but, um, um, yeah, so much deeper changes need to happen. I think some of the focus on so-called identity politics is from lack of power, you know, um, uh, it's complicated, of course, but uh, I mean, there are all kinds of powers working through uh, so-called identity politics for for no good, too. But I think there are well-intentioned people who are really uh, focused on a lot of these changes, partly because the, some of the deeper systemic changes are just so beyond, um, you know, short of mass revolutionary action. Um, those deeper changes are really hard to know even how to begin. Um, um, it's the whole so. idea. Maybe it's the idea of there being like, it's the narrative, man. It's the narrative. You know, what narrative do you believe about why these people are in power and how they got there and all that stuff? You know, what what's what's the meaning of all these things? So if you believe, if you believe their narrative, then even this sort of revolution against it is part of their narrative as well. Do you know what I mean? That's what, that's what I mean. Like to say that we're going to change the name of Ryerson, but we're still going to go to Ryerson. Nothing else is going to change, right? Every single thing about Ryerson is going to completely remain the same, right? It's just that, so they're just, they're just saying that, Oh, it was because of this guy's name that that's the problem. (laughs) You know what I mean? But really it's like so deep, so deep in, in, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. A lot, a lot of the people who are really keen to do things like change, change the name, and take down the statue, seem to also have been very supportive of the, 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 you know, the the COVID regime, the the very, yeah, 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 yeah. the the rights. (laughs) Yeah, and so it's 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 strange, right? State man, it's the fascism. Police, yeah. state, uh, not police state, but uh, like the group think of the whole 
of fascism, man. It's straight up fascism now. Like that's what that's what COVID was. That's what like all this mm-hmm. stuff is. You know what I mean? But they've done it in a, under a new guise of the technocratic, the 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 yeah. science, right? So then, yeah, yeah. Then they can they can they can make it. They can justify it. It's the scientific dictatorship. You know, mm-hmm. uh, even like Huxley talked about those things. You know, this is all mm-hmm. part of their Freemason plan, man. You know, what I mean? my opinion, my opinion, anyway, the Freemason mm-hmm. thing. <laughs> it, always, it always comes back to the Freemasons. In my, in my opinion, it's not, that, it's not that it's like the Freemasons, right? That organization. But it's just that it's the like the highest level of it. Whoever is at the top of it has used that system to sort of build the, their pyramid. And that's how it that's how it all runs. You know what I mean? That's that's mm-hmm. right. Whatever whatever they call themselves at the top, we'll never know. You know, but just that mm-hmm. we can see that what they're telling their lackeys they are is the Freemasons or whatever. You know what I mean? Do you know what I'm trying to say? That system? Yeah, like, the, uh, the, uh, the, the secret organization we know the name of is probably mm-hmm. the public facing side that the truly secret organization wants you to know about right. or how they so want to be presented. So if you see there's the yeah. Vatican or, or the the royal families of europe or one of these sort of groups whatever who's ever at the top we're not quite sure probably i think the vatican through the jesuits and all that stuff you know it sounds weird it sounds crazy but like you should see how pe- how many people are like <laughs> jesuit trained and in the in the in the system you know like trump and all these people you know what i mean it's always like it's always with that Jesuit system, but anyway, that's kind of like that's some crazy conspiracy theory stuff, right? Is that too crazy to get to go there already? Sorry, man. Oh, yeah, you know, I, I, just never I, keep, I keep going there. Sorry, yeah, yeah I've ahead. never really looked into it, it never quite struck me as being um plausible in any very literal way. Um, mm-hmm. but I mean, uh, yeah, I, I don't think I have a lot to say on it. Uh, uh okay, okay. Uh, just well, okay, uh, let's let's talk about like how. I don't know. What do you think? What, what's your, where, where would you? Where were you gonna go? Where were you gonna go with it? Oh, you know. I mean, I, you know, we. I mean, we've talked about uh, archons. I mean, I, I, it's, it's, it's maybe just a linguistic thing. I tend to use the language uh, okay, of the okay. archons. Okay, so yeah, if you want to say like that, that they run through, but the, then I would still say that there's evidence of those archons. Their work is through this Freemason system. Yeah, if you think it's some kind of demonic thing. I'll give you that, whatever. I, I agree in mm-hmm. that sense that there is so kind of... But you think it works uh, for these particular... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, just... Yeah. You know, again, I haven't looked into um, these particular organizations very much, but I just... Uh, I'm skeptical well, what, do of, that... what do you think about all the people in the past who were, who were big-time Freemasons? Like Newton, Francis Bacon, you know, or these people yeah. like that, those kind of... All these people, like, you know, I remember... Bram Stoker and I read these novels when I was a kid. Bram Stoker and Frankenstein, uh, Shelley. She she was she was even her husband was like a big Rosicrucian and and Freemasonry is all over those. You know, it's weird. It's all over the literature. It looks like even Shakespeare mm-hmm. and stuff. You know, so what? So what's like? Is it all going back to some kind of like I don't know? What What do you think? What do you think? Uh yeah. Just one one thought I had was, uh, you know. Uh, at a university, if there's an exclusive club like Skull and Bones at Yale, uh, uh, powerful, ambitious people within that campus will try to get in there. Mm-hmm. I mean, even if the actual ritualism is is a little bit empty and they don't really do anything, mm-hmm. if, if, if there's a, a kind of exclusivity to it, it will draw uh, yeah. the, a certain kind of person and often pe- very capable people who can work their way to the apex of that social system. And so, um, I mean, if you look at Yale graduates, a lot of very powerful people went through the skull and bone system. Mm-hmm. And uh, on a larger scale, something might happen in European civilization like that too with, uh, with Freemasons. Um, so it, it's like it plays a role just as this kind of room this sort of hidden room that that the ambitious are trying to get into and kind of there's then it creates a filtering system into that room so that by the time people are networking in that room you've already got a kind of um, elite 
you know. Um, so it's probably something you'll find quite characteristic of many social systems among, you know, most, most social animals, where uh, there will be. It seems like you know, there was always something like that. Like the remember, yeah. you know, they used to have the ancient mystery religions, right? Those mm -hmm. in Greece and also even back before them, even into the Mesopotamians and everything yeah like that, right? so, yeah um it's to be expected in a way in a way it's uh, not secret it's it's exactly what you'd expect a social animal to create and and it's what you'd expect if there was a demonic over over yeah. like u uber government system i don't know some kind of or yeah supernatural literally supernatural demonic system ruling yeah. the world right yeah uh, so that demonic power can probably just weave us all into its great marionette system you know that's the that was the eerie sense i got watching the masked covidites where i mean we were all kind of sucked into that marionette and to some degree in the last two years and just got the sense of a global control system that was had us all stringed up and was starting to flex its fingers and just see see how precise its control system was and it was astoundingly precise you know it had to control over all of our faces. I mean, there's nothing in the history of the planet that has had control over all the faces in real time of um, of the dominant social animal like that. Um, so it's 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 like there's this marionette that's coming into existence, and the stringing is becoming more and more intricate, and the the marionette master is gaining more and more real time sort of second by second control over us yeah. i mean you can see how how information moves on social media um at a kind of a tweet by tweet level which is a second by second level and insofar as the master is controlling us through that information stream it's it's gaining a real, real time control analogous to a, the way a nervous system has uh real time sort of second by second control over the over the over the body uh so it's kind of frightening and um, so I, I just wonder if, I mean, the, 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 the explicitly secret organizations, I mean, the Shriners are a funny example uh, where it, you can just see how cartoonish that thing and silly that thing can look even in its public facing form. And I just wonder if maybe the Freemasons are a little bit like, I mean, I actually don't know that much oh, about yeah. the Shriners, but, but, they're, but they're, part um, they're part of it. They're part of it. They're part, oh, is it part of it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, That's yeah. Why, like, well, you can see how it's, it, it seems a little bit silly, right? Like for a lot of people, yeah, they, they, when they first, yeah. and maybe that's, I mean, that's, that's part uh, of demonic that's part of cleverness. Part, yeah, yeah, it just seems yeah, silly yeah, and innocent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah but at the same time. Dressed up like these idiots. And it's like Jay Z. Yeah. Imagine Jay Z in, a, in that Freemason <laughs> nerd thing with the apron. That's what they, yeah. that's what it is. That's, and that, so they flip into that. It's that fake, right? But it's that. That's the magic of it. That's the trick. That's the spell they're casting. Jay Z, you think of Jay Z as this cool guy who hangs out on the corner and, and chops crack and like picks up chicks. I mean, not to say that's cool, but at one point, unfortunately, when I was a sinner, I thought that was cool. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so, and he had all the girls, and he and he was rolling around in the in the in all the best cars. But actually, he's a nerd sitting in this Freemason nerd getup. That's the reality of it, you know? They're just, mm -hmm. and they got even, they went through worse than that. The humiliation that they have to endure, you know, to get to that magical level. Like, that's what it is, right? I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. Like, that, like, this guy used to climb mountains. Like, what's his name? Uh, Aleister Crowley. That's the, like, mm -hmm. that's, I mean, they're very, that's why they're very accomplished and they seem very talented or whatever, the, these people, because they have to do those things to achieve high magical status, you know? Mm -hmm. that's, like, that's how they become these these grand wizards. They do mm -hmm. these amazing things. And it, and it is pretty impressive, like the stuff they mm -hmm. do, but yeah, it's not the godly thing. Anyway, anyway, sorry, what were you gonna say? Oh, no, I, I don't know, just that uh, it, it's possible uh, that these, these public facing secret organizations, I mean, there's a bit of a contradiction there, that mm -hmm. they're almost just, are almost like cargo cult way of mimicking a much subtler, larger system of control that, you know, that the, the secret is that there's this marionette master that has strings in every one of us, you know, and, and, and we really actually don't have much access to that second level 
meta being, that meta mind that takes us all in as neurons. And and when we when we play uh, Shriners and we when we play maybe even Freemasons too, and play royal family. I mean, the royal family, of course, has had real power, and I don't doubt that there are many uh, Freemasons who have had great power and influence in society. But I just I just sense a little bit of also humans engaging in the rituals of secrecy and hierarchy and power and that that's reflecting something which actually has a lot more power and which we can't understand the secrecy is this thing that we can't yeah, that's what understand that that's yeah. exactly what i'm saying that's the devil that's what i was saying yeah. is the devil and his art and his army of uh demonic angels you know what i mean that's mm-hmm. the true power in the world you know but they can't really. They, you know, although they have all this power, they're kind of limited in what they can do. So there, so there's some rules they have to play by. Apparently, you know, it seems like that's why they. That's why they go through this system of using magic and stuff. I don't know. Well, that, anyway, yeah, magic's so, uh, magic's magic's very magic rule with a K, bound, right? Yeah. Magic with a K. What do you think about these people who say that they that they practice magic with a K? Have you have you ever met people like this, or do you, do you like you know? What I, mean? I think so. Yeah, I mean, I. Yeah, I'm probably not anti-magic in the same way that you are. I think we, we uh, maybe it was two conversations ago, I, I, I said I believe in uh, yeah, sure. something like white magic and, like, and black magic. Oh, and, right, 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 yeah, right, 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 yeah. right, okay, okay, okay. And, uh, and uh, you know, um, so I think it's okay to, I mean, if there's a war among the angels or a war between angels and demons, um, probably some of white magic would involve interfacing with the, the angels and letting some yeah, of their yeah. power work, work through you. I think, well, that's, I think uh, that's what prayer is and stuff. I guess that's the difference yeah. where, 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 we, where we think, where we disagree on what exactly prayer is. Because you're saying mm-hmm. that it's kind of a kind of magic, and I was saying that it's, some, it's qualitatively different. Mm-hmm. I don't think we really explored the distinction there that much. Maybe maybe we should we could try to do that. Like I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I, I would be interested in that. Um, yeah. So so um, how is it different then? Would you say? Um. Because I think. Oh 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 oh! You know what I was thinking about with this? I was thinking about how. I think with magic, there's a zero sum game there that we're not aware mm. of because it's yeah. like. Yeah. A, a causal as they say a causal and so when you try to say work some magic even if you try to heal your heal your mother or something right you see so you, you do a magic charm on her mm-hmm. but somewhere in the world somebody just got that much sicker or something like yeah. that some negativity yeah. happened to someone else and it's always yeah. that zero sum game <clears throat> and that's why God doesn't want us to play around with that only he has the one that can give life but mm-hmm. if you have, if you try to give life, you take life somewhere. You know that's what I think it. Would, yeah. That's what I think it is. That think? makes sense to me, and that's why there's the. Uh, I mean, the, the 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 center of the black magic rite is sacrifice, and yeah. that's the, you're, you're you're describing that's the logic why, of sacrifice. Like, yeah, that's why yeah, the yeah. when it goes down to the that's why the ultimate is the innocent child, and that's what they talk yeah. about. You know, the yeah. high in, high intelligence. A beautiful child, the innocent yeah. child, you know, that's mm-hmm. the one that they want, right? So that's, mm-hmm. the, yeah, that's why, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, on the other hand, uh, um, a lot of uh, beings who do good in the world, who bring good into the world through, 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 you know, supernatural means, they acquire that power through self-sacrifice. I mean, it could, so it could be that there's a logic of sacrifice in a certain subset of what I'd call white magic that still uses the lot, the, the, the sort of yeah. um, oh, yeah, yeah, zero yeah. There's sum. That, there's yeah. that too. There's that too, right? So I think what happens there with that thing, when people do that, right? Because like that's, the, that's what I was talking about, how Aleister Crowley climbed a mountain, right? You mm-hmm. know? Or people will say, okay, I'm going to do this thing which appears good, like... Uh, some kind of I don't know even if, even something like writing poetry you know but you think it's good but it's not really because it's not I don't know well maybe that's a bad example I don't want to get because people are very iffy about or people are very touchy about art but we were talking about that too right like art anyway what am I saying here the sacrifice when you sacrifice yourself right you think oh I'm just sacrificing myself but you don't understand your place in your community and what you're giving up affects the people around you in a way that you don't understand you know what i mean that's part of that's mm-hmm. the same zero-sum game is in effect 
<laughs> you cannot take you cannot take any make anything positive in that manner without creating something equally negative. That's the that's the argument here. Or that's what I'm trying to say. Or what do you think? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, self-sacrifice maybe then uh, maybe the maybe the uh, the white magic uh, version of self-sacrifice is actually suppression of narcissism and egoism, which is a limitation um, filter on the infinite. So that if you limit, I mean, that's this is part it's of the idea. Th I think theoretically, of, uh, it's possible. I'm not saying it's not. What you're saying is possible theoretically, right? I'm yeah, no, but what how could we no, know? What? How could we possibly know? Ah, uh, uh, well, you know, that, that's a problem that haunts everything. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, but, I mean, you know by their fruits, right? So, um, that's a good, I, mean, I don't know, you know, that's a tricky phrase, you know. I, I've, been, I, I've been debating that, that particular passage with some people but anyway sorry carry uh -huh. on what are you saying i'll talk about well, if, if, if 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 good, good just seem good effects seem to flow out of someone and and i mean it's possible there's some some hidden costs antipodal you know on the other side of the world there's a uh sacrificed lamb for every flower that blooms in their footpath but um uh, i think you you can get to know the systemic effects of uh, as best as we can um of, of an individual by observing them for a while. So, mm. um, you know, it could be that. Oh there yeah. Are oh yeah. Who... You know what? Well, let's talk about that because that's a thing. That's an expectation people have, right? But isn't it possible that, that just like our, a human life or, or society or something like that, right? How, how these things, the butterfly effect of, of our different mm -hmm. things, right? How could mm -hmm. you ever, it's so infinitely complex that it's possible that although you, you know, it's possible that although we may think, we may think that we're observing, oh, he's really, he's becoming a wreck now ever since we saw him last time. Or, you know, we're, we're, we don't see the inside that he's changing inside or something. You know what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. So that's why we can yeah. never detect. Possibly we can never detect those things. And so we'll never uh, know. And you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just tend to think that that kind of skepticism haunts um, ever, everything. It's there. I mean, I, I, I think it would haunt God's self-knowledge, too. I mean, we can say by definition, God God is that being that knows everything and would not be subject to butterfly effect type skepticism because God can just see the total infinite future effect. Right. But, He's the but only one you, kind of thing, yeah. yeah, but I mean, by definition, but then you can wonder, I mean, then a, a being could wonder, am I, am I God or do I, does it just seem to me that I'm seeing into the infinite future? Maybe my vision I'm, I'm being given a false vision of a future and there's a higher being who's um uh, deluding me and and so they can do evil somewhere in my future path and i won't i won't see it i won't anticipate it i i mean that's right, so right, so right. well it's, you're it's you're you're, yeah. you're anticipating an imperfection in god that it it it, it, it betrays the definition or i don't know it's it betrays the definition yeah, yes, yeah. It betrays by the saying definition. that he has that doubt, or that he, or being eternal, it's just impossible to even doubt him and all this stuff. Or he knows everything, so literally knows everything. Yeah, so he by knows definition. that that's not true. You know, yeah, by definition. So no, no. But although, my question you know, is, I, I get you. Yeah, sorry, yeah. My, definition uh, or oh, oh, well, it's no, it's 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 by definition God would be the the one with perfect knowledge. But any given consciousness can wonder. But but am I really God? Right, like a, a consciousness who thinks it's God. Mm. Uh, I mean, could could doubt that they are the one who fulfills that definition, right? I think there's a maybe, then there might be a bit of a are, yeah, yeah, that they are the one. I think, yeah, I think you're, yeah. I think you're you're anticipating. Well, you're yeah, I mean, you might be. I don't know outside of the definition, but anyway. I think you're right. Yeah, because if God is by definition the one who has perfect knowledge, that would include that would mean they're the being who knows with certainty that they are God, that yeah, they yeah. that they fulfill that definition. Yeah, right, that's right, true. Right. Yeah, yeah. I've I've often wondered if that's uh, possible. Even um, I think there might be some some problems that just haunt knowledge itself, and it doesn't matter who the bearer of that yeah. knowledge is. Um, I mean, yeah, and. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm, I, I'd, I'd, I'd still be willing to call that being God. It could be that um, it's part of what explains the dynamism of God and the creative power of God. I mean, a lot of creation, um, like life itself, comes from sort of uh, like, or like power generation comes from differences, differences, right? Like a, a gradient. Like if you think of how hydroelectric power works or any battery, 
uses some it takes advantage of some gradient some steep Right, stepping between two states yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. unless it just yeah. skips over and yeah 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 that's true that's interesting right in the, in the dropping of the water from high to low there's there's a there's a release of energy oh, okay, and then, okay, and then okay. yeah 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 um sure. or it's the difference between the positive and the negative charge that creates a gradient yeah. which a battery can uh exploit yeah. to generate power and yeah. something like that might be at the very heart of creation i mean there is it, it's 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 like it's the fundamental version of the problem of evil which is why would god create a world at all if a world is by definition imperfect or like if insofar oh, as oh, it's oh, 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 yeah yeah, yeah. No, i think that's oh why would he create it if it's imperfect because only yeah. he can be perfect truly perfect right mm -hmm. perfect as in no zero flaw the english definition of perfect right uh -huh, yeah but only he can be that but he can create something which is good right that with him that depending on also depending on him will be will be perfect all all like all the imperfection can be removed from it and then it can become perfect you know but perfect only with that memory of that imperfection always uh -huh. remaining you know what i mean that's so the a only di thing. yeah so a dynamic <laughs> perfection something that uh comes into perfection through a process yeah, yeah I, I mean i like i like that idea and i i think i can i can I, I, I hope that that's what creation is. Uh, but I'm, I'm just wondering about uh, getting back to the gradient idea. Um, mm -hmm. It could be that part of what generates, just, just like there's an irritation around which the pearl is generated. Um, it could be that there's this almost like epistemic irritation in the mind of God. It's like a little bit of doubt or something, right? It's okay. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a mind. Mm -hmm. And there's just, God is... Well, there's like something we, there, yeah. There is something I mean, you there can, like you can, you can think about of, that. He repents. Yeah. He repents. Uh -huh, his, yeah. He, like, he, yeah, there's he, some he of this repents very, of his yeah. decision to do whatever. Sorry, yeah, ahead. yeah. So there's some of this language in 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 you know scripture to show us that God's mind isn't that different from ours. It, it seems to exhibit uh, characteristics which aren't what we call perfection, like doubt but and the, and. But the, the whole you know. thing about it, the whole thing about that is that mm -hmm. was also admitted because He created us, because yeah. He chose to uh, allow it. Yeah, you know, that's so. right. He yeah, never, yeah. he never had that problem, but until he created us, and then, you know, but then there's a problem of foreknowledge, right? It, then, then there's a foreknowledge problem that God should have anticipated before creating, that creating oh, would did. create oh, this. Yeah. problem. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He did. He knew oh. that they would have the problem, and took oh, he it knew on. ahead of time that purposely, he would repent it. That he uh. purposely took it on. That he knew that he would have this feeling, repent, and then oh, you know. Okay, yeah. But he was just, yeah, like, yeah. He was just like, I'm gonna do it because that's what it's. That's the plan. You know, yeah, the plan is worth it. You know. Yeah, so there's room there in that traditional account for what I'm getting at, which is that God is impelled into creation almost by this epistemic irritation, you yeah, know, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. like, sure. like, <laughs> yeah. well, you get this uh, in Job, you know, God is almost trying, like, he's, he gets the sense he's almost beating his chest a bit and trying to prove to Job that he's great. And you can imagine that being the logic behind creation itself, that God is, insofar as God has a little bit of, there's this room for God in the, on the great blackboard of his mind pre-creation to wonder am i am i god creation and flows that's that's the gradient the gradient between his actual perfection know, and the doubt and from I that irritation or I gradient think you're really that, something in it. no but that generates the the energy to create to to to, yeah. to demonstrate it's like it's like at some point you leave that chalkboard of doubt and you just demonstrate you through action you show perfection and power um so well yeah um, that, yeah i yeah, agree that yeah that too. yeah it's like he's trying to show it yeah to, because yeah. it's better to it's better to show it than to not show it like the glory mm -hmm. of it is better mm -hmm. than it's known than if it's not known i know yeah. i think he must be trying to say that why would he create us if it's not better to have us than to be just by himself right i don't know mm -hmm. well i i i mean i think a god who comes into existence could could be superior in some ways to a god who's just always been i mean one yeah, way of thinking yeah, about no, god's perfection is to yeah i mean i mean i, I, I can go either that. way i mean i don't yeah, think yeah. it's impossible that there's just always been a perfect mind but yeah. i i'm also okay with the idea that it, it, you know, like the Greek idea that chaos has some priority, and that order emerges from from that through great struggle and a lot of time. Order emerges from that chaos, um, even by a Darwinian kind of logic of, of natural selection, but on a kind of cosmic uh, scale. Or, or and from that possible, being, 
Oh, sorry, god, a god, and you know, and from that process, a god, a god emerges a being which gains total control over that system and and self, and that's a god who's earned, like it's earned its godhood in a way. And it could be that then behind it all, there is just the perfect mind that's always been there. But that perfect mind knew that it's unfulfilled in a way if it doesn't also run through this process of just starting with nothing and working its way, right? Like if something is truly perfect, you can strip it in a way of all its perfection, just throw it into the field and mm. its true nature will eventually out. It, like a God will emerge from that eventually. You can't suppress its ultimate nature. So God almost wants to prove its divinity by, it's like the Prince and the Pauper idea, right? Like for um, God wants to get hit on the head and have amnesia about his Godhood, mm. but to prove then, like to, to self-prove that well, he really is that, God. I mean, yeah. It's just that you don't believe in the God of the Bible. Like it's that, that's not, this is not the God of the Bible. You know what I mean? It's not that well, God, it could be the God of the that's... Bible is, uh, uh, I mean, we don't get a super deep history of that God in the Bible. I mean, we, 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 we begin in, 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 what's it called in, uh, in the middle of in the, the action, you know, he's, yeah, in it's, it's in the beginning, says, but it's, uh, Bereshit, Bereshit bara Elohim. So it's in the like beginning, in the beginning, God created. The, God created heaven and earth. Yes. Yeah, so it's mm-hmm. it's like, um, and that that's in the beginning of the of creation. Like in the beginning of creation, it's a little bit redundant. Yeah. There's, that, there's that debate. There's that debate's going on. Yeah. Oh. And is it, yeah. What in or sometimes it says in beginning. Some people will take uh, out the the the, art, the definite yeah. article. Oh. Or some, so in there's beginning. that discussion. In beginning. What would that mean? God, in so beginning. That's a little bit different. Yeah. That's what does that mean? <laughs> In beginning, he created this. In 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 the process of beginning, that whatever that means, right? In that in that process, he created uh-huh. this. These two things: heaven and earth. And the earth was without form and void. In the sense um, of like, to start our meal, we'll begin with a nice consomme soup, right? Like, is, <laughs> it, is it in that sense? Like, in uh, to start with, God did this. Maybe, maybe something like well, that. Something like yeah. That. Well, so one one way of thinking about the opening passage of Genesis is that it's telling us about the beginning of the cosmos. Like, here's here's how it began. And it begins with God, you know, in the process of creating God's. And we don't get the deep history of God, per se. Right, yeah. We get we get yeah. the history of the cosmos. There's and bit, so there's a bit you can yeah. take from later texts. Like, yeah, you don't really you don't get any history of him. Almost yeah. none, you know, almost right. none. Yeah, but you can yeah. kind of draw some. Well, we uh, we do draw conclusions, but the whole idea of, uh, for example, what do they call it? Ex nihilo, creatio ex nihilo, mm-hmm. the creation from nothing. That's uh, that's debated. You know, I don't even know for sure myself. I'm not hundred percent. I would generally lean towards ex nihilo, but I'm not hundred percent sure. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, what, what do you think about that stuff? Obviously, I mean, I guess you don't really have any take a hard stance on those things. Uh, or you don't uh, believe uh, in that necessarily, anyway. What are you going to say? Sorry. About about uh, about ex nihilo. Um, yeah. In particular, yeah, yeah. Um, I guess it's important to some people theologically. Yeah. Yeah. The Christians. Um, there's an ideal operating there of a, of a perfect being. A perfect being should have total self-sufficiency. Shouldn't be rely on it, reliant on anything, including some prior materia, to be able to create. I, I get that. There's another like like I I, I think I, and I used to share. I used to have that tendency to identify perfection with that kind of extreme independence. I think I'm more open to a more relational sense of what perfection could be. Uh, or maybe I'm less hung up on perfection. Uh, you know, like, um, I mean, I know God by, by, by definition, especially after the medieval infinitizing is, is uh, this perfect being, the sum of perfections. And, perfection, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, those uh, things, well, if, it's per- if it's perfect, then he... He might not even have experienced time before that that thing time might have been this thing that he created mm-hmm. now and not, only now does he experience it mm-hmm. right only now because now he's created it but before it was the infinite the eternal moment or the or that whole thing mm-hmm. so yeah there's that you know if yeah. that's what that's why you can kind of say if he was living in this eternal moment where he literally knows everything mm-hmm. and so 
that's why he can say also that he is the, he is God. He is uh, the only one. There's none like him. There's no, you know that kind mm -hmm. of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Then once he begins time, now he begins now that whole concept of regretting things and and how, change Mm -hmm. or, or making decisions it, that's uh, new in a way to him you know? yeah in a way in a, in a weird way right even though he knows everything yeah. still mm -hmm. he also knows when... what the consequence of all of it but the feeling of it uh, the feeling yeah, of yeah. It. when he sees when he sees uh the the israelites build the golden calf he, he knows they were going to do it but when he sees mm -hmm. it then he's like oh i'm gonna i'm gonna destroy them and then mm -hmm. then when yeah. only when moses even though he knows moses is going to beg for their beg for their life and uh even offer to take his own life for theirs and all that. only when he sees moses do that then he relents you know only then but mm -hmm. he knew that was going to happen he knew mm -hmm. he was going to relent mm -hmm. but only when he you know what i'm trying to say mm -hmm. and he's and it's the same way for us like he knew abraham was gonna sacrifice the son he knew that abraham was gonna was gonna do it but until he did it and also abraham has to learn that lesson too and feel what that mm -hmm. feels like and mm -hmm. so all of that's part of the process. Mm -hmm. So you know what I'm trying to say? And Jesus, <clears throat> he, he knows he's going to go on the cross, but he has to do it. He has to go through it. Mm -hmm. He has to really go through it. And then only then, even though he knows he's going to succeed, he knows he's going to be victorious. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. But it's so crazy. The, like, yeah, at the time, he doesn't know. At the time, he doesn't know, you know? Because it's like, otherwise, it's not real. But I don't yeah. know. Anyway, what do you think? What do you think about that? Yeah, I... Uh... Uh, it's funny, you know, God's regret uh, in in time. It's almost, I now regret having made this medium time mm. in which regret is possible. <laughs> it's like the ultimate <laughs> primal regret. You know, I regret having created a system within which this feeling regret mm. is possible. Because before there's time, there's no possibility of regret. You can't yeah. look back on something you did yeah. and say, I wish I hadn't done that. Um, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, there's something very fascinating there, you know, the pre and, and pre-creation -pre psychology and then in it. Uh, it's interesting in, in, I, I know you would, I, I, you probably think uh, Tolkien's work is a little bit demonic, um, certainly pagan, but in his, uh, in his account of creation, you know, in the Silmar Silmarillion, mm -hmm. I mean, he's got like a Yahweh type being there with a, it's, it's pretty Christian actually. I mean, it's, it's, it's a, it's a father being of light in heaven and and he 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 creates and he's in 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 he's got sort of a chorus of angels who are singing his creation and there's a fallen angel among them called uh, melkor um yeah. so it's quite, I read, it's quite I read it when i was a little kid yeah 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 like a long time ago anyway. but there he gives the angels the option to enter into this song they've been singing they've sung they sung the whole song of creation right as a chorus right. and and so they've known it in this sort of abstract polyphonic way but uh and, and it's they've they've felt its beauty from this external and then he he points into the distance in the darkness you see a little light emerging it, that's erda that's earth or that's i mean we'd say the cosmos oh, and he, he he gives the, the angels an option to now enter into it and experience the song from the inside to incarnate and to live it from the inside and they really don't have any sense of what that would be like they're angels who've been singing the song of creation not living it some i think some of the mentors it's, like it's kind of like job too right job 38 when the when the when the sons of god sang for joy you know what i mean after god created mm. everything that's mm. the same thing like you're talking about you're right it's very biblical that that silmarillion story in many ways you're right mm -hmm. yeah but he is a catholic right and so aha uh -huh, yeah so how do you what do you, how do you think of his uh, relation to paganism then? I mean, do you think he was a pseudo Catholic cryptic pagan, or uh, what's your take on or Tolkien? Either, it could be that well, even you might just say that just his Catholic false doctrine was just poisoning his mind in that way. You know what I mean? And so that's oh, the, the that's Catholicism pagan. was already pagan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> and even and even um, even even what's his name? Uh, C.S. Lewis is in the Anglican, right? Which is a, another uh -huh. one. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. So they're all like all those things: Anglican, Lutheran. To me now, from mm -hmm. what I can see, they're just like they're just trying to continue on the same thing. Like it's a it's a controlled opposition move. The mm -hmm. first controlled opposition move was those groups you know because they used they they gave up on trying to just execute these guys they knew the movement 
I mean, there was people before Luther that were already talking about, uh, you know, like like different guys like Zwingli and people like that. They were already talking about how the church is not good and the pope is the pope is wicked and it's not about works it's about faith and all that all that whole arguments so mm -hmm. it was before him so but once he comes out it's all very much within the german kind of church too like that he's just basically saying okay why don't we just cut off all this money going to to uh the rome and then we would have all this money you know what i mean and his system mm -hmm. of the German church, it didn't really change that much. You know what I'm trying to say? And other groups like that. I mean, it goes back to uh, literally Rome adopting Christianity. And, uh, you know, I, yeah, it's funny. Exactly. It's, it's, I, I mean, you can, it, there's this uh, duality there where uh, on the one hand, you can uh, pessimistically say Christianity has been absorbed by Rome, by the great secular evil. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you could say Christianity has, has infected from the inside the great secular empire, and the empire mm -hmm. is having to adopt it and faking it at first, like it's a facade, or yeah. it's poorly understood and integrated. But it has it, it, there's there's a demand that it more that it better and better imitate at least imitate it, Christianity. Yeah, you know, like the, the, the politicians at least now have to lie about do good, doing good yeah. before they could just brazenly assert their power and their narcissism. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and 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 so at some point, like like in method acting, it's hard to distinguish the performance from the reality. And and uh, if we demand a high enough level of performance from Rome as it's performing its Christianity, at some point it becomes indistinguishable from actual Christianity, right? I mean, it's like Pascal says in The Wager, where when, when one objects, okay, I accept that it would be good for me to uh, believe in God, that that would be psychologically good for me and um, mm -hmm. um, probably... Um, uh, metaphysically good for me in eternity but but mm. but tell me pascal how can i believe i don't i don't just because it would be good for me i can't yeah. literally phenomenologically get behind yeah. that proposition and pascal as a, about, I think, oh, sorry go ahead yeah uh, pascal yeah. just he responds he says well just you know go through the motions and stop reading atheists and and mm. and um go through the ritual go through the key he, he had mm. belief in the power of the ritual to just entrain the body mind to believe and he's yeah. probably part partly right about that so uh, an individual can be entrained just through the empty ritualism and behavior to mm. become a christian from the inside and uh, a whole civilization could do that too it could play uh, being Christian, you know, but then at some point we force it into. Yeah, well, that's the thing too, partly because it's like there's the there's the there's the Christian of being saved, being saved from death, from like getting eternal life, you know. That's one. There's that's one thing in the in the Christian religion, and that, people have been kind of mixing that up with being a disciple, you know. And just so they, you can get saved without actually. Because there's this idea that you're supposed to give up your sins and all these things. Like, uh, I don't know, <clears throat> submit submit to the lordship of Jesus Christ in order to in order to go to heaven. Okay, <clears throat> but that's not that's not actually the case. All you have to do is believe the gospel, the good news. Jesus came for your die for your sins. You're a sinner. You you deserve to go to hell, but God loves you, so Jesus died for your sins. Mm -hmm. He rose on the third day. You believe those things, that story, that narrative, mm -hmm. you, then you go to heaven. And then nothing can take that away from you. That's the that's the gospel, the good news, the free gift. Mm -hmm. you, know? you just believe it and you go to heaven. But some right. people try to say, oh, no, 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 no. That's not, that's not, you have to do all these things. If you don't do these things, then you're not really saved. If you don't, if you don't like, I don't know, live a good Christian life and, Mm -hmm. all these things that you're not really saved right you're not really mm -hmm. a christian mm -hmm. and so but that's a lie of the devil that's just a that's just a way to get people to think that it's about them and not about him and what he did you know what i mean well on the uh, you know on the other hand uh if if, if, if you're uh, you have a violent warlike life you know of mm -hmm. uh appropriation and and um really causing harm in the world and I mean, it would be nice. Yeah, it definitely would be good news if 
what you did in a way didn't matter. And all you had to do was believe the good news. And, and so then, you know, it just becomes like the Catholic rite of confession where you, you, you can do terrible things, but as long as you confess, you're absolved. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's like the barbarian warlike mind, the, the appetitive, the appetitive apex ape um, spreading havoc and fire through the world loves that ideology and that ritual of absol uh, ab absol absolute absolution whatever um uh, yeah for, yeah for their sins yeah, yeah. and uh, so i'm suspicious of that too for similar reasons right sure, like sure. it could be that the devil's ideology is the one you think Thinking is the real me, one yeah, yeah and, so and, and the reaction is sin so that i can just and, go uh, and live a life of sin yeah now, that it I, might be it might be saved, right yeah, like it might be the, the, talk about that. the true gospel is, that. is is love, you know, and, and, uh, if, and until you're living with that as your primary reality, you're in hell. You're not just going to hell, you're in hell. And um, um, so uh, it's, well, not, it's, that not, it's, to, it's not that you have to do certain works and say you've got to, you have, you have to change in your heart and, and the way you live. And that will be yeah. by their fruits, you'll know them. I mean, if someone is truly living from love, they're not going to be behaving. The same. They're not going to be behaving in a way which requires them to go to confession every week or every day. You know, like it's not. Yeah. Uh, well, so, there's a, well yeah. that's the thing. That's just after. It's just that you don't think about that. You know, you just think about what he did. And then it's just not part of the. Because if you start to think about looking at what you're doing, what you're, if you're sinning or whatever, I mean, of course, that's the thing. Like, who, who could come to, who could come to believe those things? Jesus is the son of God. Jesus came down from heaven and died on a cross to, for your sins personally, because he loves you. You know, if you believe, if you believe those things, how can you, the chance of somebody just going back to their life of sin is just, that's just kind of like a thought experiment like worst case scenario they throw out there to make you think that it's such a bad idea but it's a good idea because once you think wow jesus did that for me he doesn't expect me to do anything and even if i don't do anything i'll still go to heaven he's just giving me a free gift well that's amazing man then you love him then you do everything you do good is for the love and not for because you want to go to heaven that's the beauty of it. That's the that's the beauty of the gospel, mm -hmm. you know, the, the message. The yeah. It might work differently for some personality types, though, right? Like, I think what you're describing is how it would work for a lot of decent people, but there are real well, narcissistic people, types out there who will the thing is, we'll just take the free gift. They'll, they'll take the free yeah. gift and uh, and they'll just oh. continue on. Yeah, right? Like, the, free, the logic of the free gift to them just means... Yeah. In a way, and in a way, they're right. If it's a free gift, that means I can do whatever I want, and mm -hmm. I'm absolved of my sins by what they did. Like in a way, that's a real test of if God, if God really is promising the good, this gospel, you oh, really yeah. believe oh, it. Oh yeah, yeah, no, and that's you, the thing. You, yeah, you, I don't. I'm not going to deny that they do have yeah. the ability to do that. They literally they do, and that's the yeah, weird thing. Yeah. But they, I mean, they probably won't. I, I, I find it highly doubtful that most people would even be capable of doing that. And, and the people well, that you know, like that, I, I they, mean, they... you know, psychopaths are, uh, I think they're quite sure, people, maybe. the psychopathic type, yeah, and, and maybe, it's, well, could, they, yeah. could they even, well, maybe, yeah, they have to believe those facts, right? But then I think even the psychopath, well, I think that whole, that whole thing may be just, I mean, is that even a real thing? Is that really a demonstrable fact that <laughs> yeah, psychopaths yeah, yeah. exist? Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Like some uh, being with with total lack of empathy. Um, yeah. Um, they just they just make up. I mean, em better. empathy empathy does occur on sort of a scale, and yeah, there will be beings and people who are uh, uh, lacking that that ability to care about others. But a lot of those beings could behave in a very ethical way, right? They could, through just some kind of Kantian abstract ethics, mm -hmm. reason their way into ethical behavior, and uh, conversely. People who are oh, well, just too bound by their empathy can be quite inconsistent in the way they uh, help others. You know, if the, if the feeling just isn't humming that night, they they might not help you. Uh, they might they may give you the shirt off their back when they feel it. But empathy is just a little, you know, like a lot of emotions, it comes in waves, and it has its its uh, um, you know cycles. So, um, yeah, that's the thing. People that say yeah. that you can have morality based on empathy. It does come and go, right? It's not. Sometimes yeah. you feel really bad for the Ukraine. Sometimes you're like, uh, I think that's kind of this more complicated than, you know what I mean, or whatever. I don't know. I guess mm -hmm. you're not allowed to say 
it's complicated anymore, you know, but <laughs> yeah, it's uh, amazing <laughs> how that nuance has been lost. Uh, and uh, it's like 1984, you know, the memory hole. Um, yeah. Phenomenon. It's so it's so eerie to see I mean, it all. You know, you know what? The the U.S. actually on their website, you can still look at it. The U.S. Justice Department. They talk about how there was all these abuses of uh, Russians in the Donbass and stuff. Of course, they claimed. I mean, I was talking about it in 2020, right? I'm not talking about. Mm-hmm. Uh, now they probably took all that off. I don't even know, right? But mm-hmm. they did have those things. They used to talk about those things. And yeah, yeah. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. you know, the Russians will say like, "Oh, there's like." people getting tortured with Nazi symbols carved in their chest. Now, I don't believe either story. I think it's like an Illuminati trick. I don't know. This whole, I think the whole war is like basically uh, wag the dog type of thing. You know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah. And and it's laughable. It sounds laughable, Mm -hmm. but I mean, I've shown on my channel, I know it takes a long time to see all that stuff, but like actually this one video, if you check it out in my, there's a playlist, you know, but Mm -hmm. there's one video where I literally like, show how they fake these videos it's like it's mm-hmm. quite obvious like they fake these videos of like civilians getting attacked or dead babies and it's like listen this is just ridiculous you know and, but, but we know that they do this stuff from like from time man even from well i don't want to talk about that. those are other conspiracies such as you know the boston bombing or boston marathon bombing or those kind of things but anyway mm-hmm. Those kind of things. Yeah, the I Las am a, Vegas I, I, shooter. Do you do you, do you, you don't you don't even think about those ones, eh? No, I I, mean, I tend to think that these things happen. Um, uh, I mean, I I'm not naive about. But even the, if you believe those things happen, I'm telling you, yeah. look at that video on my channel. Mm-hmm. Even if you believe that, that there's no way you can believe these things that these Sky News reporters or whatever. All these particular saying, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These particular yeah. things, these cases are clearly yeah. faked. And so if yeah, you're faking yeah. those, what else are they faking? Right? No, I, anyway. no, get, yeah, yeah. No, agreed, agreed. And uh, no, I'm, I'm, that logic I accept and I've seen in operation so many times, especially in the last couple of years where uh, it's like, well, if they're willing to just ignore like the lab leak, uh, you know, just like what else are they just not willing to cover? Like when you see a clear example of some kind of omission in the storytelling or flat out falsifying, um, then you wonder, well, what else, what else is, is like that, right? It's like every lie uncovered is evidence of lies you haven't yet uncovered, probably yeah. more uh, clever lies. How deep does uh, it go? How deep does it go? Yeah. I mean, look, every yeah. generation thinks that they're immune to propaganda. Yeah. But the one before yeah. that you look back and they're like, oh, those guys were just like the World War One. Now they think it was a war of aggression by mm-hmm. the uh, the triple entente, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Against against the Germans and, and mm-hmm. the Ottomans and stuff. That's what yeah. they see it now is now. They literally see yeah. it that way. So yeah. but at the time, the people were like, oh, we have to. You know what I mean? It's like for yeah. nation for Canada I mean, people, mm-hmm. Canadians, right? Like going to yeah. fight in. This this war for oil in the first war for oil basically, it's just mm-hmm. dying like, like by the like uh, by the millions literally right like it's so it's so un- insane man it's so nuts mm-hmm. but that's yeah. we're gonna be next man now they now they're well, I mean look if they could do COVID if they could just tell you to wear masks and and all this other people because we always think oh well we'll never go we'll never get drafted and go fight in a war. Mm-hmm. overseas and all this stuff like in world war ii we'll we'll never fall for that one again but uh maybe maybe we will like look at this covid thing how everyone's like just just completely oh take the vaccine wear your mask and all this stuff anyway what, what do you think what do you think about it? yeah Sorry. no I, the, the the sense of one being immune to propaganda and and uh worship of the fat the great leader and you, you know it's it's easy to see when other people are subjected to that kind of thing it's very difficult to see the ways in which you are partly that's just because it's harder without that perspective of history but also because the techniques of propaganda have become more sophisticated right they were yeah. they were much balder i think uh 80 years yeah. ago and um the, the system has learned uh, you know it's 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 become a lot more sophisticated it's learned to talk with the, the soft voice of inclusivity and rather within the hard voice of power and Lebensraum and that kind of thing and but it's 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 effects are the same but it, it's learned to talk a soft language and to train us into being receptive to that soft language but um 
yeah, it's it's um, it's distressing to see people falling for the same old tricks. You know, um, uh, do you think, essentially do you ever think the they same could tricks. Draft, like now they have the draft on women now. Do you think they could ever like draft an army and go to fight the Russians? <laughs> Is that like a thing that could happen in the next 10 years or something? I don't know. God. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, as you say, if they can get masks on everybody's faces and needles into everyone's arm within 18 months, I, I don't. And, and, and I think the system is just becoming more powerful, you know, this mm -hmm. marionette master. So any, I think all kinds of things are possible in the next 10 years. Um, it's distressing to see people even now unwilling to let go of these restrictions. I mean, Brock, I, I just learned Brock University is not drop, dropping the mask and vaccine mandate. They're, they're carrying it on, I think, into the fall term because it turns out I, I got the inside email from it. it, it it's like the faculty association at Brock was demanded. They pulled their members and it was like 70 percent of their members were in favor of continuing the mask and vaccine mandate indefinitely. And so, uh, so and, and they, they just demanded that Brock, uh, you know, uh, not let go of these. So, so Brock oh, announced wow. that it's, it's keeping these mandates. And that that seems to be, I mean, back to where we, we began talking about the academy. I mean, there are different sectors in society and the academy has just seemed so susceptible you know yeah. um the faculty these union unions and i mean i would push fight my union and try to get them to help me um uh, when, when i was fighting for my job uh in the fall term but uh yeah. the, the union like the, the the vast majority of the union membership were behind the push like i almost got the sense i almost felt for some of the admin just the regular writers mm -hmm. it felt like some of them weren't as into these yeah. measures as the union and its members were and they were just partly from pressure from the teachers were mm -hmm. instituting the most draconian kind of COVID measures anyway they're just these these people who are just so signed up to it that even when the government it's like right? okay they're, they're, it's they're over just, is it because they're um, like socialists and stuff and they're just like they, they think because uh, they trust the government no i don't think stuff? it's I, there's there's a lot of basic trust in, in i think and it's 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 uh in like i think canadian academics can be susceptible to that they think that basically we're pretty good you know apart from our history um with <laughs> like the, they'll yeah. look at our history with the aboriginals and they'll, they'll be shameful about that but they won't see yeah. as you said it's so superficial they're looking for the name change of a guy <laughs> yeah, from yeah, many yeah. from generations yeah. ago but they yeah. basically think our government's good you know and yeah, and yeah, and yeah. so and and we should follow the science which means follow the governmental science and uh, yeah there there there's a kind of naivety there a naive trust that we basically have a well-intentioned government and medical system and uh yeah. that naivety is something that you're trained into by yeah. being welcomed partly into that class right the our academics are part of that technocratic oh, yeah. oh, knowledge, yeah. knowledge worker class and oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. training the yeah, lawyers who go on to become that? mps and... oh, sorry yeah yeah exactly exactly yeah exactly so what, what do you think about the people that phrase useful idiots i know it's got kind of like the origin of it is controversial when it whether it was <clears throat> obviously it's probably not really lenin but you know some i don't know whatever who cares but that concept right that, that idea that you've got a class of intellectuals right who are just like just these brainwashed like slaves of a system of control mm -hmm. you know what i mean i don't know what do you think about mm -hmm. that not to like yeah, not to yeah be I, like i don't know i don't know is that kind of insulting and demeaning and stuff i don't know Sorry. Oh, it's, 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 the, I mean, the danger of the intellectual class is that they're um, trained and articulate and smart, uh, but they can still be basically fooled by the dominant ideology of the, of the yeah. system they're in. So then they become very powerful, yeah, useful yeah. for that system because they're yeah. articulating it. They're articulating it, yeah. yeah. So they, can, they, and they, they become this mouthpiece for those, yeah, for those very yeah. system that they yeah. they think yeah. that, I mean, they think, I don't know, it's so sick in a way. Like, anyway. And they're sincere, so their performance is, is flawless yeah. because they sincerely, they're not aligned but politician. I guess that's, what, that's what he was no, talking no. about too, uh, uh, Huxley, with, mm -hmm. the tech, the, with the scientific dictatorship and the people would learn to love their their slavery and stuff, right? That's part of it, yeah. right? Or what are we gonna think? Sorry, I, I keep interrupting you, but sorry. No, I don't think so. No, that's that's uh, that sounds right to me. Yeah, it's it's un it's it's unfortunate. I mean, um, 
I mean, a lot of our greatest critical thinking comes out of the academy too. I mean, uh, I, I, I think. Um, oh yeah, that's what it. That's, yeah, so it that's serves true. its function of thinking critically, but when, mm-hmm. but it's always within the. Oh, you know what? I hate I, I, because people will call this just an internet meme, but there's this thing, the Overton window, and of course, Chomsky uh, yeah. has talked about this too. The idea that mm-hmm. debate is is kept within specific mm-hmm. parameters or whatever, or like borders, or and so that way, mm-hmm. so that's how they can do it. They can allow you to very vigorously discuss issues and get that critical thinking. That the advantages of that are are still can be focused on their desired uh, interests, right? But they can mm-hmm. keep it away from certain other topics which will threaten their interests you know or what are we gonna yeah say? What are we gonna, yeah yeah no that it is a useful concept and it's uh, it's everyone should be asking what, what what are the frames of their overton window i mean um it's easy to point at another room of discourse and recognize where wh- what window it's operating it's very maybe by definition impossible to so see look, maybe maybe yeah yeah i mean we're, we're, we're too, coming, you're in the forest you can't see you're the in trees, it yeah, that yeah. Kind of, yeah yeah you, you can you can get out of a, a given window but then you, you have to ask again now what's my window you know and you'll know once you're out of that you'll know once you're out of that one you're zoomed up <laughs> that too but you're always within some kind of window of, of bounded uh, discourse um yeah and and the academy has its uh, for sure, it's it's stunning to see it all. Op- it's stunning to see it operate in its particulars. You know, um, it's stunning. Like I, I, it's it's stunning to see bioethicists um, discussing the ethical feasibility of a proposed experiment and never being willing to raise the question of the interspecies violence involved in the expert. Oh. Right, like that, like 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 for bioethicists who are employed by all these hospitals. Bioethicists, boards, man. It's, it's like sick. a lot. Like that whole. Field, like it's like I mean, not the whole. They're field, not allowed man. to just. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's one of me- several things, but it's just it's stunning to see them just <laughs> asking all like using all their incredible critical thinking skills to like really dig into the details of the experiment and figure out you know but never being able to challenge the premise of whether you should be just using other beings and innocent beings and sort of like that so it's it's stunning when you see the overton window operating mm. and so it's so in place you know institutionally and then the academy more generally will have its overton windows i'm sure i'm subject to a certain number of those uh, but secularism would be like even in our theology departments, um, you're, you can't presume. Well, I, I, you know, I guess divinity schools get a bit of a pass there, but uh, uh, no, to, to extend, they're you, still you stuck in many ways. They're yeah. still they're yeah. still stuck. Like they can't, for example, certain theories. Or for example, the King James theory, the King James theory of the Bible, the biblical, the history of the Bible by by the theory uh, that that it was god controlling it the whole time right <clears throat> the theistic we we should we might um, call it the theistic idea rather than the deistic idea that he <clears throat> created the bible perfectly originally and then let it just go you know what i'm trying to say or even actually most people now believe in theistic evolution which i would say is just deism you know anyway. theistic evolution Oh, meaning uh, a God creates but, through the mechanism of evolution. Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. yeah. But wait, how does that connect to the interpretation of the Bible? Uh, or uh, of the oh. account oh, of what the Bible is? Yeah, because they'll say, they'll say that God created it perfectly ah. in the original text. And then uh-huh. since then, it's just been subject to the random forces of history. And also that humans using our reason can, can, can somehow through theory and and the science of text criticism reconstruct the original Mm -hmm. the original text of the bible right that theory is similar to the theory that god created the universe and -hmm. then just let it go according to random natural forces and that we can we can reconstruct all the way back to the original you know what i mean so that's and you're if you you believe god is part of that if you don't if you don't think that that's just naturalism deterministic naturalism and and uh and and science and positivism and and that whole thing right if you don't think that's part of that if you think it's god doing that that's deism and your view of the king james bible is that god has been operating in history to uh bring us this perfected text yeah yeah that it's just improving it he's he's, he's working Mm -hmm. with it 
and only the people who can who can come into power over it and and translate it or, or whatever or become part of that mm-hmm. process he makes them become part of that he raises them up to for his glory yeah. that kind of thing that's what he talks yeah, his, about his 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 pen is a huge pen that transcends the centuries and works yeah through the centuries and then through the people and these institutions yeah uh, that's uh, i i um yeah i think that's how divine poetic production works you know um i don't think it's just in the case of the sorry. bible but yeah, yeah. I, I think the bible that, yeah it's, it's, that's yeah. just one example of it and, it, and it's yeah. what we were yeah. talking about about the gradual perfection perfecting of it's perfect it's good but it needs to be perfected more and part of that perfection mm-hmm. in this in this current situation we're in right now is sin has that's part of the process right and it's the bad part you know that we're just going through right now in the beginning and then once we get rid of the sin problem at the end then it's still going to be a continual process of becoming mm-hmm. more and more perfect but we'll just get rid of mm-hmm. the evil and stuff you know what i mean mm-hmm. yeah yeah. Yeah, we're, be, we're uh, creation's an angel making machine. You know, the angels are hovering, <laughs> yeah. hovering outside of creation in many ways. One way is angels are hovering outside of creation is they're hovering a little bit beyond it as this thing we asymptotically approach as creatures. Uh, yeah. In a way, when we see a- angels, we're seeing our perfected future version, which, like the angels, uh, aren't quite God, but they're close. You know, there are some, there's some medium med- 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 between the. Yeah. 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 Uh, but uh, yeah. Uh, it's funny. Like I like how I like how in the Bible. I mean, I was just reading Psalm eighteen. It's this thing where David, uh, after he defeated, after he, he finally God brought him victory over Saul and his other enemies, the Philistines or whatever, right? So he writes this poem, Psalm eighteen, and in it, God is riding on the on the cherubim. You know, riding on the wings, <laughs> really? the wings of the wind. Yeah, oh, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> he, because he, he prayed, he's praying. When David's like, "Save me from my enemies," and God hears him in the temple, and he's just like, uh-huh. he jumps on the on the cherubim. You know what I'm trying to say? That's it's like almost like a superhero, like or like yeah, a Greek yeah. or like those Greek myths, right? Or mm-hmm. they even compare it to those, to those uh, Babylonian and other myths, like the storm god. Or whatever that kind of thing. Lightning mm-hmm. is coming out of his hands. He, he's shooting mm-hmm. arrows at the enemy, right? Mm-hmm. But it's like, I don't know. To me, it's like, well, I don't know. Even know why I brought that up. I was thinking about what was what were we talking about? Why did I start talking about that? Angels, perfection. Oh, uh, the angels. Yeah. And yeah. So it's almost mm-hmm. like so. That's what I think. So it's like this: if God, if a limitless spirit being, wanted to project himself into a three-dimensional space such as the earth right let's not talk about outer space and stuff let's just talk about earth this kind of thing you know he would he would, he would project himself into basically a human a hu- humanoid a creature two legs two hands that would just be kind of like the most ideal thing for him you know or just mm. or in his in his idea the mm, way he I likes it or or maybe or maybe you know, know what maybe yeah. it just is what he looks like but I just think it like he be, basically yeah. looks like a human, and or that's could, or, you know it's all yeah, in his imagination, yeah. right? It's all his. It could be, his yeah, yeah, it could be so that. Anyway. It could be that. It could be that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, anthropomorphism could be correct. It could mm-hmm. be. Um, or but, rather, uh, or rather, anthropomorphism is just the reverse of what's actually yeah. happening, right? Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. um, they always say anthropomorphism. That's the other thing. I was making a big scene about it, but actually, I think it's a big deal. The way the fact Christians all think of that when they talk about God's hand, or mm-hmm. God, God put His hand in front, or God mm-hmm. shined His face on you. He has a face, right? And they, mm-hmm. so the the idea is that that's anthropomorphism. But I would actually say that that's a bad way of thinking about it, and not Christian. Well. But God's supposed to be infinite too. I mean, um, um, I mean, we we have a uh, head raised above the ground to protect it and encased in a skull, and we've got this swath of sensitivity called a face to uh, let our emotions play for our, our, our conspecifics and social engagement. And we have we have these uh, distal uh, dexterities extending out from you know our central mm-hmm. core uh, to get things done in the world. You know, and and uh, God will have versions of that insofar as God can do and think well, he, and or, express or and communicate. 
Oh, sorry, yeah. But what if it's just like but, but surely God, form. God's yeah God, but god's form will just be a lot to, i mean it'll be like a thousand arms and you know that's why gods like the hindu oh, no, gods that's, are that's many, that's many hands that's, yeah uh, well no because that's the thing because he would always he would think of it like this i don't have to actually pick up something with my hand mm -hmm. i don't have to do that i just think of something to be in my hand and it comes to my hand so but that, that then he doesn't need a hand. He doesn't need a hand. He doesn't even need a hand. <laughs> yeah. But because That's he right. wants yeah. to take the form of things, so he would say, "Okay, let's have two, because there's one for this side, one for that side, kind of like, or the two, the being the 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 duality of it, or that." There's well, you some should keep aspect going. of the there the there's some aspect of of creation that has that dual nature to it, right? And that's part of I, his no, form. But if I feel like you're not going far enough. If, if God can truly just think the rock into his hand, then he doesn't need a hand to begin with. Right? Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, no, it's true. Because it's true it's what true. does he want to do with the rock? If, let's say he but wants to throw the rock through a window. he wanted to create humans. He wanted to create humans. That could be, but so the question is whether what... God looks like a human. You know, we're, we're talking about yeah. whether God looks like a human. And I'm saying if God is truly this mentalist uh, super being, then God wouldn't be thinking rocks into his hand god would just be thinking the rock into the window without a hand yeah. at all no no no. Yeah. what i'm saying is that what i'm saying is this okay what i'm saying is this he's saying to himself i'm going to create something in my image right but he uh -huh. doesn't he's just a limitless spirit being right now but he's saying uh -huh. to himself if if there was a 3d universe mm -hmm. what kind of image what would i want to look like in that place mm -hmm. you know what i mean and it, it, it's basically like the most amazing looking human that ever existed you know it's so beyond our image of beautiful humanity like it's like mm -hmm. the human form you know how weird our 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 concept of the beautiful human form is tied up with sexuality but think of the there is some beauty to the human form that transcends a sexual lust or whatever there's some beauty to the human form you know and i'm saying what i'm saying is that that is an idea he had in his head first the human form was an idea for his form if he was going to exist in this plane and then he said okay i'm going to create a, a human creature in this plane that i created in this realm that i created and that human creature is going to be in my image which was already my idea so it's never an anthropomorphism that god had a hand god had a hand because he wanted to have a hand and then he created a human with a hand no, what do you think no but this is very an anthropomorphic in the sense that there's so many ways God would want to be in the world. I mean, you'd think God would also want to fly as just a very primary expression of God's ultimate um, independence from gravity. And so God would look like oh, a yeah, bird yeah, no. too. Isn't I think it cooler? In, like, isn't it cooler though? God too? would look. God would look like maybe the zoo that we have. So God, I, like the, the, the anthropocentrism is to think that God would specifically take our form with our limitations. I mean, every evolved animal has all kinds of trade-offs, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, we're special in the zoo right now for sure. But I mean, for most no, no, of no, the no, animal like our existence. Limitations, our limitations were part of his design for us, but not part of him. It's just that, so he just he just wanted some something that looked like him but also to be basically an animal you know because like that's what the animals yeah, how always we, how... the animals are good he doesn't oh, he... okay go ahead he doesn't look like anything you know he doesn't look like anything he's he's an infinite being and maybe when when an infinite being needs to incarnate it doesn't look like a human it looks like creation anthropocentrism is it look it's it's like this in creation is what an infinite being looks like when it incarnates that's the that's the variety including uh, all the forms no, 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 because the creation like, is separate from him so he has a him and he has a creation so he that's why he walks in the garden in the cool of the day he well, like, that's the animal so 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 then okay if so what what that being would look like when it incarnates might look like the animal kingdom or something right like it's 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 going to want no, to have no, no, an environment it's going no, to want to have an environment animal kingdom he created the animal kingdom to be his fr his like creatures his friends his his little creatures his well, like this, this is the that's, that's why they right? created this is them. the i mean another well well it's another way of looking at well, it, it is put it this way Anthrop anthropomorphism to say it's anthropocentrism is an explanation is a theory of explanation for that story 
you know but i'm just yeah. saying that my theory yeah. is my theory yeah. is the other theory the theological theory and the, and that when when these biblical scholars take that anthropo anthropocentric theory on that that is not that's a violation of christian theological uh you know good practices you know what i mean it's it's not it's a, it's a bad practice in theology that's what i would say what, what do you think sorry yeah that's yeah anthropocentrism is is a, is 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 no, no. Anthropocentrism is a, is a, is an evaluative term, uh, critical. I think it's it's uh, anthropomorphic. Isn't though? Anthropomorphic is more neutral. Anthropomorphism could be true. I mean, you're saying anthropomorphism is correct. That God does have a kind of sort of human form, not in his ex nihilo or outside of creation um, form, but when God incarnates, it tends to look like a bilateral, bipedal uh, being. Uh, I just, I mean, that's possible. That's one way it could happen. But I, 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 th I think uh, another way of thinking about it is a less anthropos, a less anthropomorphic or anthropocentric vision of how God would incarnate would be, well, God's going to want to locomote, right? God's going to want to have the power of motion and, and exhibit freedom. Of course, incarnated, that freedom is going to be constrained in its environment, but it's also going to have the form of, of apparent freedom and, and, and. Okay. This is, Lack what, this of is what I say about this. Is what just I let me finish my point. Let me finish my okay, point. Okay, 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 okay. Sorry, not to make you know. Yeah, sorry. It's that so God's locomotion will look like all the varieties of animal animal locomotion you actually yeah. find in existence, right? Sure. I mean, so yeah. So now what I'm saying is he chooses one variety for his own because he just prefers it, just like how he chose the one people, the Jews, or you know, he chose mm -hmm. like whatever, like. The, the, that kind of thing. He chooses one thing and it's just because he likes it and it's just because it looks cool or it just, it's just, it's just part of his beauty and his everything. So that's why rather than just, even though he, he doesn't have to fly, when David calls him in his temple, he doesn't have to have a temple. When David calls him uh, and he hears it, he doesn't have to fly down on a cherubim. He could just think to himself to be there and he would be there. Mm -hmm. But it's just because it's more beautiful, it's more perfect, it's more like instructive to David, and also everything about it is just good. If he, if he, instead of just appearing there where he wants to be, instead he rides down on a cherubim and shoots arrows and throws lightning bolts. You know what I mean? That's what mm -hmm. I mean. Or what do you think? Does that yeah. make any sense? Yeah, it's just, it, it could be that. It just could be, it could also be that God, I mean, until fairly recently, we, maybe we weren't that beautiful, uh, you know, like, I mean, go back two million years and uh, maybe we we're pretty ugly apes. I, I mean, by our current standards of, you know, anthropocentric standards of beauty. And uh, I mean, were we that much more impressive? Uh, our, our bilateral <laughs> version of animal hood, was it that much more impressive than a leopard or an eagle or I mean, so many other forms or a, uh, an ant, an ant, a beehive acting in unison. I mean, there. I, I look at creation and I see an infinite being realizing itself in an infinite number of ways. And when an infinite thing incarnates, I think it might take on a multiplicity of forms and can't be summed into a single one. Mm -hmm. The single, single egoic incarnations that, that we are will tend to favor our own version of it. And God will mm -hmm. say, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm you, but I'm also this and this and this. this. Mm -hmm. I've got many yeah, paths, yeah. I guess that's but like, I that's kind yeah, of the but difference. yeah, it's such a it's yeah, a worldview yeah. difference here. I think between us, that's why we're yeah, having yeah. this thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a difference there, but uh, but I don't know, I don't know, and uh, uh, it might be that um, um, out of the multiplicity of creation, certain forms get selected. I mean, it's it's the whole thing's been operating by kind of selection. Um, and it could be that there's uh, something a little bit anthropomorphic being selected, you know, and um, out of out of those options, um, or that we, through our intelligence, are becoming more like a being who can now think itself into all like we couldn't fly, but now we can fly by thinking ourselves into aircraft, yeah, yeah. you know, by en engineering ourselves into a flying being that can fly in ways. Uh, that exceed, like in terms of speed, for example, the flying creatures, and in terms of range, we go. We're air, uh, astronauts now. So um, through, I mean, and if God is this pure mental being, then that's very characteristic. You'd expect that God would incarnate into ultimately a being that 
is able to think its way physically into anything it can imagine, right? It can't necessarily originally physically fly, but it has the mental capacity to think, engineer itself, uh, yeah. to, to think itself into into aircraft. So um, yeah, oh, you know, so we're, we're just special. doing it through our through our through our achievements of technology. I don't know. Through thought, I through thought. I mean, like... technology is is the exhibition of thinking in the material world, which is just mm -hmm. mimicking what God did uh, through creation, right? God, creation is God thinking himself in, thinking into existence a certain uh, reality, and that's what we do through technology. Um, obviously, we, well, you, you know, you and I aren't technophiles in the uncritical sense, but you can also. Mm -hmm. uh, honor technology as as exactly what you'd want a creature to do in its environment in some form yeah there's some there's definitely some good things about it there's definitely a lot of evil things happening with it though now oh we're in a fallen world so we, the shit. we get the awful version of everything right so yeah, we're uh, yeah. i mean there's probably a version of gender fluidity which you'd be open to you know but we get the <laughs> really demonic we got an often demonic version of it you know everything gets twisted yeah. and the angels are a little bit gender fluid i think we talked about this before i mean uh, yeah. the angels are a little bit unsexed and 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 so there's an I actually, actually think i actually think because well that's the thing now it's funny you say that because it's weird. Like, actually, they do seem to mostly are uh, all be male, you know. Oh, is that because right? Okay. Actually, yeah. yeah, I don't know what I'm talking they, about. Well, be, male, yeah. you know, but they, it's weird uh -huh. because they have se some of them have sex with human women. Apparently, it appears. Right? Mm. Genesis mm. six. Wow. Well, and so, and that seems but... to have been going on even to this day, possibly. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So yeah, the the, the succubus, the yeah, the demonic yeah. Uh, spirits that. You know what I mean? So there does seem to be yeah. something there with that. Yeah. There, uh, though there are some like there's a there's a story in Ezekiel where there's this woman in heaven, but it's not very much like they they see all the angels seem to be male, and God and Jesus is obviously a man. So I think that when they created the woman, the the human, that's why they take the woman out of his rib. In my opinion, like that's because with the animals, he just creates them, right? Like the pair, but with the human. He creates the male human and then he takes the rib out of her because the human form in the animal kingdom, it proceeds logically from God's form. As I was saying earlier, he's actually looks like us, right? And then the woman now, that doesn't proceed logically from his form, but from the man, from the human man. So you kind of... So you're tr her into him, you know. You have a anyway. truly anth anthropocentric uh, vision of this. Yeah, I, I, I uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, I, it, I, aren't you? Andro, I mean, if you, andro, if you, you might say anthropocentric. I mean, talk yeah. talk about Overton windows. I mean, you're you, uh, of course you're aware that one of the Overton windows you might be working with in is a, a very fallen form of patriarchy, which, yeah, which yeah. is, well, is twisting is, twisting the truth to self project its own powers. So you, you've got to at least be open to the possibility that your your theology has been shaped by some of the worst aspects of patriarchy of a, nah. a power seeking man I'm not, you know i mean which, i'm open to you're not you're not open that. to that, that possibility that's what's no, going no. on well that, no here's the thing. I, the whole I idea think, of yahweh being no, male no, no, is no, maybe no, maybe no. that's the projection of a of a of a of a culture no. which is anxious about the influence of, of, of its own uh, dependence on women and um, i mean look put it this way i've put it i've i've felt i've heard these arguments many many times and it's not i don't see any there's any there's nothing about in making women inferior to men in the Bible. In fact, I think the Bible is what gives our Western society the notion that women are e equal to men in any in any way. Otherwise, there wouldn't well, be. Well, uh, you, know? you know, if you're saying God is is like really male, and the male form is a, is a more perfect um, incarnation of his form, and woman is a variation on that. Well, I mean, that's not. That. Oh, okay. I thought I thought you were saying I thought you were saying that the male is the form which just like the human is the form which more lucidly incarnates God's nature. I thought you were saying the male then among the human is the one which is more closer to God's form. I mean, you were saying God's a man, Jesus is a man, and the and yeah, yeah. and woman, well, no, the woman is a they're variant. Male. On that. They're male. They're male. Oh, they're male. not man, right? And so, and the thing oh. is, because it's just that they don't need sexual reproduction. Right. Uh -huh. So and so for the so but he but but when he was creating the creatures, the most advanced creatures are use sexual reproduction. Right. So he he's gonna create a, 
a creature in his form is going to be the most advanced of the creatures. And so the most advanced creatures use sexual reproduction. So that was his plan all along. And it kind of helps to help us understand about him too, because he's not one being, right? He's three in one, right? That idea. So there's this aspect of you need two to make the human. You don't, it's no, there's no human just by himself. There's, it must be a community. There must be some kind of, uh, coming together of a, of a, of a group or I don't know, like, you know, there's no one human. It just says there's no one God. There's three in one for the God, you know? And so anyway, mm. what do you think? Mm. That's part of it. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't know, but what to think about the Trinity. I, I, uh, yeah, I don't I never really felt compelled by that view, but um don't have any deep oh, thoughts. Right. Okay, okay. Well yeah, yeah. that comes from that um, comes from Jesus and Jesus is God and yeah. the Holy yeah. Spirit and all this stuff. Anyway, whatever. Yeah, that's yeah. the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I see a little bit confusing. Ex yeah. unnecessarily confusing. Maybe, maybe, yeah. But, maybe. Maybe. But uh, maybe that's just the way it is, though. What if it's just the way it is? So it's confusing. Oh, it could be the way it is. To be. That's just, so we just oh, gotta figure yeah. it out. You know it what could mean? be. So I mean, it, it could. These things could all be true, but uh, yeah. it's like it's a question of what you're willing to take on and get behind as a proposition. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. But um, I think um, I've, I've got uh, got to take off. But um, go. okay, we'll, do, we'll do this again, eh? Yeah. Continue our continuing yeah, conversation. Sure. Sorry, man. <laughs> Sorry, dude. So wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. I was going to ask you about one more thing. Um, sure, yeah. I forget what I was going to ask you about, actually. Anyway, now you know what? I'll, I'll bring it up next time. I forgot. Okay, what, yeah. There's some things we, I wanted to bring up, but I always forget. Anyway, it's fine. Well, we, we were going to talk about education. We we did, but as as always, um, um, we knew that would uh, branch out into lots of things. And, uh, see, I think mm -hmm. theology, I mean, that's the uh, home home topic of the show. And yeah, uh, I think yeah, that's yeah. one of our main co common one of our, one of our you know in common interests. So um, yeah. it's always always we'll great to talk to talk theology yeah. with you. And uh, um, yeah, we have some differences, uh, but um, it's always great to talk about these things with you. And, uh, sure, man. Ah, yeah, oh, we'll do it. We'll do it again yeah. soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, absolutely, okay. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, sorry to yeah. Sorry to keep you up, but uh, thanks for coming oh, no. on, bro. Thanks for coming on. No, no. Yeah, my, where, my no, pleasure. Where yeah. are you? You're stuck in some uh, stuck in some room out there. Where, sorry. Where were you saying? Where Where are you at? Where did you have oh, to I'm, keep I'm, your phone? In? Oh, just uh, I, I I don't have my computer audio set up, you know, because the uh, I, I it's my I have this audio interface that everything goes into the mic and the right, and the monitors right. and everything. And I, there's something not working with it. It's just it can only do mic or monitor. Uh, audio output uh one at a time so i don't know what it is uh but uh so i haven't been able to use it for a few weeks and it's one of those things where i, uh, I don't know it's a small thing but uh I don't, I don't know how to begin solving it apart from just buying a new audio interface anyway um this works all right okay man um Sorry, next thanks, time thanks for yeah, coming on thank, thank we'll talk you. To you soon absolutely uh, All right. And thanks for watching the Toronto Bible Study Podcast. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs>